I've soaked all the pieces in warm soapy water for about 20 minutes, given them a scrub with an old toothbrush and then dried them off. So you can see that some of the pieces are going to require uh, pieces cut out of them called shims. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to separate many of these from the sprue. Uh, but I'm going to leave some, like the undercarriage here, on the sprue and spray and paint them on it. That's because there is no reason not to do that. So these will be sprayed black, whereas the body I will probably spray red uh, in order to take a step out of the painting. I'm going to assemble this in sub-assemblies and I'm going to show you which sub-assemblies I'm going to use. Uh, and I'll come back with the pieces ready to put together the various sub-assemblies and also demonstrating to you which are going to stay stuck to these uh, resin uh, casting lugs. So I'll be back in a minute to start the assembly and breaking it down. I've got the pieces of the Mega Bomber cleaned up. Let's have a look at how we're going to put it together. So we've got ordnance. So we've got four rockets, six big bombs, one mega bomb. Those are all going to one side to be sprayed and painted separately and stuck on at the end. We've got three undercarriage pieces with the shims removed. So shims are the sections of resin uh, between the pieces. So all of these are going to be sprayed separately, painted separately, stuck on at the end. The tracks, the same. The turrets, the same. However, we've got one turret here with a couple of guns that need sticking on. So we are going to do that and then put it to one side. So to help these small pieces stay in place, I'm going to add very small pieces of liquid green stuff. to each side to help the superglue bite. So doing that immediately helps that superglue piece in place and you can see how nice this looks so let's zoom in and show you so we've got a little bit of green stuff poking out there so I'm going to tidy that up once it's set but yeah so those turrets are going to go to one side look at the basic assembly. So the two biggest pieces of the fuselage are these. So a little bit of liquid green stuff in this hole with a bit of super glue. And we immediately have that joined together quite nicely. We've also got this door. A tiny bit of liquid green stuff. A couple of decent sized drops of super glue. The next things they want you to put on are these windows and side shooters. So, first of all, we work out which window is going in which side. It's that one going in that side. Again, A 
a bit of liquid green stuff on each side. bit of super glue and thread oh. turret through we're actually going to need some super glue on the turret there we go Still got this able to move around. You know what? That's not such a bad thing. On the other side, So. so that is most of the main body that we'll be building built. The only other part that immediately springs to mind is the tail turret and the tail fin. So again, a little bit of liquid green stuff. Super glue. And in goes the tail fin. The tail turret. Make sure you get this right side up so you've got this hatch at the bottom. There we go. So that's basically what needs to go on the body. Uh, the turrets. Ooh, we could put the nose in now as well, couldn't we? Uh, I've chosen the nose piece that goes with these two turrets here. Uh, you could choose the other nose piece if you want. The other nose piece goes with these little nipple gun things here and has a lot more windows and hatches and domes. So. advanced gap filling with this then bang in goes that nose piece so you end up with the fuselage built and that's fairly solid in terms of scale let's quickly grab a warlord titan and you can see how long that is in comparison So, fuselage goes to one side. So we have four sets of engines. A 
These are also all going to be sub-assemblies. So these actually go in with little help. You just got to work out which is the top and which is the bottom and it very much appears that this is the top. Yep, so that's one. So it looks like this bit is the bit that goes on the outside. Two. So we've got four big engine pieces. The question is whether, because if you glue these in, you will find it very hard, if you glue both in, to get to the details on the sides. The question is if you want to. And you know what, I'm not sure you do. If you are going for super pro paint job, only glue one of these on and treat the other as another sub-assembly because then you can definitely get to all of the detail engine pieces. So another sub-assembly. So I've done it so that the bits that join into the hull are the bits with the longer engines. However, ooh, and that is the way it is on here, uh, there are inner and outer exhausts. So that's that done. And now we come to the fiddliest piece of all, the wings. So uh, the wings have Right, the wings have got an outside wing tip. The upper part is the part with the wires. So again, trust the old liquid green stuff, even if it's not amazingly liquidy. Picked up the wrong piece.
then we've got the elongated wings done. So, uh, next we've got these pieces. So, we've got the tail connections. Let's work out exactly how these go. So they go like this. So again, it's going to be a little bit of liquid green stuff. We got a bit of resin to remove from that hole. And that goes in. And then we do the same with the other side. So, so we are now almost got all the sub-assemblies done. So, wing pieces, it's not wing pieces, tail pieces. And that is how those fit on. So again, There we go. Just leave that to dry for a minute. There we go. With a little bit of liquid green stuff to get rid of. So that leaves us with only these pieces to concern ourselves with. And the issue with these pieces is that they go in here like so and are called the lower wings and the lower strut. And that they connect to the wing Once the engine's been put in, like so. And then you glue the rockets and the undercarriage to them. So the question is how best to do this. Because this is one of those things where if we glue it in tight now, we could have problems if it's misaligned even slightly when it comes time to uh, glue it all together. So is it better to do these as sub-assemblies? It probably is. And I know that leaves you with a lot of sub-assemblies. So you've got four engines that you can spray bolt and metal. Uh, you've got 
all these pieces that you can spray whatever colour you want to do the plane. Uh, you've got the turrets, bolt gun metal, the undercarriage, bolt gun metal. You've got all the ordnance, which if you want to contrast the ordnance you might want to do um, grey sear or wraith bone. But you end up with a lot of pieces still to put together after you've undercoated them and when you're getting ready to build the plane. So, that is how I would do the sub-assemblies on this. I've seen some people who've already got it all built and put together, and that's great for them. But, if you want to do a lot of detail, you've got to uh, be able to get to it. So, if I'm going to do these rivets here, and all these panel edges, then I want to be able to get to them. If I want to do, give a reasonable amount of detail to these turrets, I've got to be able to get to them. Uh, ditto these turrets. Um, spraying the undercarriage black to start with and then picking it out is going to make that much easier. The ordnance you've really got to do separately. And there's a, there's a specific way to attach it. So these are the inside ordnance bits and are specially designed uh, that they're not going to clip into and get in the way of these wing pieces etc here in fact it's going to be this wing piece here which itself is not a super good fit but we will cross that bridge when we come to it. But yeah, that gives you a bunch of sub-assemblies, each of which are going to be manageable um, as an evening's painting once you've got them undercoated. So getting the wings done I'll probably do in an evening, getting the engines done I'll do in an evening, getting the um, fuselage done I'll get done in an evening, doing the ordnance in an evening, the turrets and the undercarriage in an evening. And it lets you get it all together one step at a time so yeah those turrets are now glued into place so how does the kit go together pretty easily uh, it's not as bad as I thought it would be uh, once you take the shims out and there are nine of them uh, the trickiest ones are the ones in the undercarriage and the ones between the barrels on the flat cannon uh, the shims and the tail pieces are pretty easy to sort out. Um, ditto the shims in these uh, holes for you to put these ball turrets in. So I like the kit. I'd still say not necessarily a kit for beginners because uh, anything with resin is not necessarily a kit for beginners and there is literally a pile of bits of resin and stuff I've shaved off just out of sight. Um, but I appreciate the amount of detail on this kit and I'm deliberately painting it in sub-assembly so I can bring out that detail uh, and so that it can be used as the centerpiece model of my Orc Airwar. So um, I've enjoyed building it, it's not taken a lot of time, uh, the cleanup is by far the most demanding and long uh, part of this process. So if you've liked this video, hit like and subscribe. If you want to chat, leave a comment below. But otherwise, good gaming.